liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Bob and Doug. It was the first time in almost a decade America launched its own astronauts into orbit and the first time that a private company, SpaceX, accomplished the feat. NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley went up for a two-month stay on the International Space Station. Now, could they make it back down? This is a prototype mission. This is a test flight. So it's one thing to go to space, but the, real, the actual end of the test is when the crew is back on Earth safe and sound. It is dipping in and out a little bit. Today, David Saint-Jacques watched his colleagues, also friends, plummet from the sky at hundreds of kilometers an hour. The friction of re-entry generated heat on the capsule of nearly 2,000 degrees Celsius. Then the parachutes came out, and the Dragon ship Endeavour splashed safely into the Gulf of Mexico. Splash down. Anybody who's touched Endeavour, uh, you should take a moment to just cherish this day, especially given all the things that have happened this year. At this space museum near Montreal, the mission sparked excitement and some big dreams. It sounds very exciting, so hopefully in the next uh, years and maybe decades, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to go as tourists in space. Well, it's been my dream for a very long time. In, in 20 years, he can pay for his trip to the space. They <laughs> can celebrate with each other. This mission was the final test flight for SpaceX as it seeks NASA certification. Elon Musk's company eventually wants to send people to the moon again, even to Mars. And while just another small step for humanity's journey in space, it's a giant leap for the future of private space travel. Welcome back to planet Earth, and thanks for flying SpaceX. Simon Akineshny, CBC News, Montreal. So what does all this mean for the future of space travel? Let's check in with Bob McDonald, the host of CBC Radio's Quirks and Quarks. And uh, Bob, we've grown up with the idea of government supporting space exploration, but what does SpaceX mean now for the future of flights into space? Well, we're now seeing it being handed over to the private sector, and that is making it a lot cheaper. The cost to fly on Dragon is about $55 million per seat. Now, that's a lot of money, but that's less than half of what it costs to go up on the space shuttles in the old days. They were over $100 million. It's even cheaper than what the, the Russians were charging to go up. So that's it. The other is that SpaceX is doing everything themselves. Under government science, they usually have a whole bunch of different contractors in different parts of the country, and they all have to come together. SpaceX is under one roof, and they're just using NASA like a paid customer, which means that they can sell flights to other paid customers. Tourists who want to go into space, anyone who wants to get up there who can afford the ticket, they become the airliner, the airline industry for space. So it's an entirely new era. And SpaceX has another mission uh, very soon. Tell us about that an even bigger spaceship. It's called Starship, and it's going to make just a short hop, uh, go up, hover, and then come back down again. It lands on its feet, and this is the one they're planning to go to the moon, and then a larger version even go to Mars. Elon Musk wants to build a Martian colony. So both SpaceX, NASA, and Boeing, they're all looking towards the moon now to go there to build a colony, to build a little space station around the moon, and go there and stay, not just make footprints and plant a flag. So it's an exciting new time in ex space exploration, Ian. Well, as exciting and enchanting as all that sounds, so does your motor transportation, your, your sailboat there. So enjoy the Gulf Islands. <laughs> Thank you, Ian.